Happy Sunday morning, Preps fans. I am Ashley Moore, and while we may be in spring sports, today it feels like summer. So to encourage you to head outdoors sometime today, we are headed straight outside to the beautiful Coors Field. Now the Thunder Ridge Grizzlies being welcomed on the Coors Field to play their Grandview Wolves in this foundation game. And it'll be Thunder Ridge's Will Fisher at bat, clocking an RBI single just over the bump, and that'll bring in Brock Lanceville to score. All right, so same team, different guy on the plate. Ben Paquetti hits the gap and watched him run the bases. That hit would bring in two for Thunder Ridge as they both tap home plate. But let's see some wolves. Tony Crow flies one out to right and this one has some hang time. But it's called for the out when Kyle Kasha Villani treks home and he score on the sack fly. And then there was Grandview's Justin Dean who hit a ground on a short. That would bring home Tucker Smock and watch him go sliding in home. But Thunder Ridge takes home the dub. 8-6. to six. But it was a doubleheader on Friday. The Eagle Crest Raptors took on the Cherokee Trail Cougars, and boy don't their logos look good on the big screen. Cherokee Trail's Ethan Waltz on the mound, and watch this bad boy right down the line for the strikeout. Then how about more pitching? Carter Wilcox now on the bump for the Cougars, and this strikeout wins the game as Cherokee Trail wins by seven, and although these games technically don't count, what an experience at Coors Field. Three year varsity starter, and uh, it was my first time that I've had the chance to throw here. Um, so it honestly felt great to kind of get on the mound and just take it all in. Um, it was a great feeling, you know. I got the nerves a little bit in the bullpen, but I was able to calm myself down. I mean, it's I hope to play here when I'm older. Well, how about some Valor Christian in boys lacrosse? And would you look at there at the chrome helmets? They're taking on the Chaparral Wolverines. And I'm going to just keep it real with you. Valor dominated from start to finish, like right here. Alex Rizwami with the turn and score. And it will be Valor again, this time on the fast break. Luke Alred to Baden Brown for the goal. And then, uh-oh, off the face off, Harry Long just takes it to the house as Valor wins it 26-2. to two. Well, who doesn't love a good rivalry game? Well, one thing's for sure when it comes to the private schools, we could always count on a Colorado Academy versus Kent Denver doubleheader. And not just that, but the girls' soccer game was a top five matchup. Ready. Kit Denver, Sun Devils versus the CA Mustangs, and the energy is here, folks. We begin on the attack. Sun Devils, Ailey Matsuyama sizing up the goalie, and Lucy Garsney makes the save with her calf. But let's head the other way. CA's Naomi Wolf on the breakaway. She passes one with just the goalie to beat, and she boosts it to the back of the net. And CA wins it 1-0. to zero. Having that target on our back, we want teams to come at us because we're going to come at them harder, and we want to go right back to that championship and win it all. It's a rivalry game, so tensions are high. I knew we needed to get one in to raise the to raise the level. Got a chance over the top. Got a good touch in. We'll save two rivals in lacrosse, and we are face-off ready. Kit Denver, first possession with Jack Cutler, sizing up his shot, and he sidearms it in for the goal. All right, so Colorado Academy's turn. Braden Schubert to Alex Gonzalez, who slings it from his hip and took a mean stick check in the process. And that that's worth the celebration, but the game ain't over. Kent Denver now behind the cage. Ben Dutton with the moves, but CA goalie Rowan Brown is right there with the shutdown as the Mustangs win it 7-4. And let's talk to a senior on how big this win is. That's our number one rival. Uh, my biggest thing is starting off strong, and I did. Um, and then I was just super pumped. The offense played great. Defense backed him up. The past two years, we've lost to Kent, so this one really meant a lot. And as a senior, all the other bo senior boys, it's been a long time. So we were freshmen when we beat Kent the last time, so this was awesome. Well, who remembers these Smoky Hill Hoopers? Or shall I say Hoppers? I mean, the question is, who doesn't? Well, they just got even more impressive. Not for what they're doing on the court, but in the offseason with their club team, the Mountain Stars. And earlier this week, two of their athletes visited our studio to talk about a humanitarian trip of a lifetime. <laughs> First question out the gate, how does it feel to be on the bounciest team in Colorado? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, I, it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Basketball doesn't stop for y'all too, though. You're both on a club team, the Mountain Stars, um, which is why I wanted to talk to y'all today because you just came back from Africa. Um, talk to me about going to Africa, and it's called Coins for Kenya. Talk to me about going to Africa and just being a part of something more than basketball. You know, it's... 
it was an opportunity you know, presented to us and just to be able to do something bigger than ourselves and for somebody else. And I think it was something that like neither of us could pass down. We, we raised a whole bunch of money um, and then we collected like clothes, shoes to give out to like kids um, in a local village out there. And then uh, we um, also helped like uh, gather uh, materials to build desks and help build classrooms. Just even just playing with the kids, stuff like that, just that's where I had the most fun. So it didn't stop for y'all. Y'all went from basketball here to basketball here. You had a game in Africa. Who did y'all play and how did that go? We played against a team. They kind of flew out all from Africa, so we played against a team from South Sudan, uh, the Congo, and then we played against one of like the Kenyan local teams. And it was it, it was really fun. We, we, we won all of our games. We ended up winning it all. And so it was, it was just crazy seeing, just even seeing how they play, how they treat each other, how much it meant to them just to even play against people from like America. It was, it was, it was insane. I mean, what did y'all take from this experience? It just, it made me so much more grateful. I think one for what I have, and also just grateful to be in the position to be able I can help people. That's like the biggest thing I took away from it. And, and it also just motivated me to, you know, just to see how much basketball, how, how much it means to them and how they use it to change their lives, that's, that's just exactly what I want for me. And so it, it just, it, it definitely motivated me. But for this full story, make sure you tune in to Overtime tonight at 1035. We get an inside look at their time in Africa as the Smoky Hill Hoopers have turned into humanitarians. Once again, that's on Overtime. But before we go, you know what time it is. Time to announce this week's honor roll winner. You at home had to vote, and the top play of the week goes to Rocky Mountain's Jerry Stone. The game was tied at three runs a pop when Stone blasted one to center field, and it is gone. Lead off homer to go up in the bottom of the six. But what you don't know is that Stone would go in in the top of the seventh, striking out three of three batters. So congrats to you. We're a reminder, we can't be everywhere, so if you ever had the game and see something you like featured on the prep rally, just send it over. That's all, folks. I'm Ashley Moore, and we'll see you next time right here on the Nine News Prep Rally.